Good morning, everyone. My name is Andres Franco. I am the CEO of Easy Genere, Spanish company specialized in floating solar projects. First, I would like to thank the organization for the invitation to participate in today's event and to share our insights after 13 years of experience in floating solar main challenges and opportunities. I'm going to start sharing my presentation and go into the topics that we're going to be discussing today related with floating solar. First, I would like to start uh, saying that floating solar, even though it's kind of a new concept, has been going around for quite some time. Here you can see the first floating solar project that our company built and uh, was designed in 2008 and it was installed in 2009. So this plant is operational for already 13 years. This plant was installed in an irrigation reservoir in the south of Spain and it was built with the first version of our technology, Easy Floating. And in the last 13 years, we have continued evolving the technology and learning from some of the challenges that we will discuss later in the presentation, mainly related with environmental factors like water level variation, winds, currents, and the challenges that the, the climate is posing in these type of projects. First, talking about the big potential that floating solar has. This is a number used widely by the World Bank that estimates that if we use the artificial man-made reservoirs, and I'm talking about artificial, I'm not talking about lakes, and only covering 10% of the surface, we could install about 4,000 gigawatts of power. Uh, the numbers in India are also impressive, and some of my colleagues uh, that are participating today will talk about the potential of floating solar in India, but there are already several large floating solar projects announced, mainly utility scale, but there's also a significant opportunity for uh, self-consumption um, projects that can be used in private reservoirs. Our company is Igenere. It's a Spanish company that it's mainly specialized as an engineer and product development company. We have created a system called Easy Floating, which is a system that we have already installed in our 13 years of experience in multiple type of water environments. We have installed it in hydropower plants, in irrigation reservoirs, in natural lakes, in water treatment facilities, in former quarry lakes, and now we're going to be installing this in fish farming industries or in other challenging environments. Our business model, it's all about the creation of ecosystem where Easy Genera participates as a specialist in the floating solar structure and in the anchoring and the mooring solutions. And we partner with other companies that provide the EPC, the engineering services, or provide the financing to the end client to bring the benefits of floating solar projects to the end users of such projects. There are three main benefits of floating solar projects that I will discuss briefly. The first one is related with energy generation. Floating solar projects, the panels that are installed, generate more power depending on the conditions of the site, the humidity, the maximum temperature, the winds, that can vary from 5 to 15% higher output in the same panel. And the other benefit that sometimes is relevant is that the generation of energy happens closer where the consumption is needed. This is mainly a factor in self-consumption scheme in irrigation reservoirs or also in hydroelectric facilities that already have the connection to the grid close to where the floating solar plant is installed. The second benefit it related with the water as floating solar structures reduce uh, water evaporation in our technology is around 80% reduction in water evaporation. And we are seeing with the extreme dry seasons 
that are happening around the world that this is a really important benefit for the future. And also the installation of floating solar panels increases the water quality by reducing the algae proliferation. And the final benefits related with the land, a little bit the obvious benefit that you don't need to use land to install a solar project. You can take advantage of the water and that means that you preserve land for agriculture, for livestock or for other of the original uses. Let me share with you a short video that shows some of the benefits and the way a floating solar project is installed. This is a video in Chile uh, for the largest winery in the country and one of the main wineries in the world. You can see in the back the reservoir where the project was installed. The installation process is very fast. In our technology, one mega can be installed by a group of five people in 15 working days. And you can see that they use traditional tools. This is the way after the assembly has been done on site, outside the reservoir, you let the panels go. The structure is flexible and it slides towards the reservoir. The structure is safe for any type of walking, even to absorb snow loads. And uh, this is the way it continues its install to get to the final installation for the client. So if we talk about the key challenges of floating solar installations. These six challenges around adaptability, logistics, installation, maintenance, friendliness with nature and resistance to nature are the six main challenges that we have identified in our 13 years of experience. Let me address each of those. If we start with adaptability, you need to decide and to design a project so that water level might be lower than expected. Here you have a couple of examples of projects in Spain and in Chile where water level has been lower than expected. And given climate change, this is something that we can only expect more happening. Uh, given the extreme dry seasons, the minimum water level records will be broken. I don't know if they will be broken in two, five, ten years, but they will be broken. So it's important to choose a technology that is flexible. In this case, the technology is resting on the slopes of the reservoir or even at the bottom of the reservoir with no water. Then logistics is another significant challenge of floating solar projects. Uh, the floats take quite some space to be shipped. And even if it's produced in India, uh, India is a big country and you need to send it uh, maybe to another part of India. The infrastructure is not uh, so convenient and you can run into a significant cost. We were looking at a 50 mega project in India a few months ago and the difference, the difference in cost of the logistics was about 7 to 11 euro cents per bad peak. Uh, in our technology, one mega takes between six to eight uh, trailers and containers, depending on the configuration and the type of panel use. And the, uh, the technology is three to four times more efficient than other technologies in the market. Then talking about installation, there are several challenges related with the installation. Usually there is not a lot of space around the reservoirs to do the installation. So it needs to be done in a way that takes a very little space that most of the installation can be done outside uh, with reduced space and that it can be efficient. As mentioned previously, in our technology, one mega can be installed in around 15 working days by a team of five people. And also it's important that the installation can be done with traditional tools and materials. We provide the tables and the material that are used. Uh, these are the same materials and tools that are used, for example, to assemble furniture. So no need to use expensive and complex uh, tools like cranes to do the installation. Most of the installation is done on the ground and it's a process that provides significant economies 
of uh, learning and uh, productivity can be achieved quite quickly. Then moving into the maintenance part, it's important to provide uh, a safe way to do the maintenance. Uh, buoyancy and floatability are key aspects of floating solar project. And I'm not just talking about people walking or standing on the structure. I'm talking when you need to do a change in a PV panel or you need to change a string inverter that it's on the structure. Think about, for example, a string inverter. If a team is going to replace the string inverter, they will be walking, carrying a string inverter that might weigh 70, 80 kilos. And that means that you have two people carrying, the two people might weigh, let's say, 70 kilos. So at the end, you're talking about uh, two people plot the string inverter that might weigh over 200 kilos. If they don't have enough buoyancy in the structure, workers will be doing electrical works and at the same time they will be touching water. And we don't think that's a safe O&M environment. And this is something that in the future there will be more and more large companies and industrial companies that want to do floating solar projects, but they want to do it in a safe way for the workers. And also it's important to provide uh, not only manual ways of working, but also the possibility to introduce robots to do the cleaning. Those robots again are heavy robots. They need to be managed uh, by a person. And in our, our technology, the robots can move from one panel to the other. They can even move from one row of panel to another row of panels. And that means that it's a very productive uh, process. Around one mega of panels can be cleaned in one day. Then in regarding the challenge of being friendly with nature, it's important to know what are the maximum percentage of surface that can be covered. And it depends on the type of environment. If we're talking about a natural lake, uh, probably you can you, you cannot cover 100% of the reservoir, but if we're talking about an artificial reservoir, maybe one used for irrigation purposes, where there is no interest in having uh, wildlife uh, or they, they, they actually are putting chemicals to reduce the proliferation of algae, in that case, you can have a significant coverage, maybe more than 80% coverage of the water surface. So it's important to analyze in each case what are the maximum percentages of surface that can be used. And then talking about the friendliness, and the, the resistance to nature, it's important to bet, and this is something that we believe will become more and more relevant in the future, to bet on quality and durability of the floating solar structure. I understand there's a significant cost pressure and floating solar in India as well, but we want you to be very clear and to understand that if there is not an enough investment in the floating solar structure, there will be problems later with the structure failing and the OPEX cost will increase significantly together with the, uh, with the possibility of not being able to deliver the energy production. And in this case, you can see some of the analysis that we have done with our technology yeah, to understand the deformation and where the main mechanical stress and fatigue happens in the structure. And here you understand also how we are producing our technology using injection molding, which is the highest quality and more precise way of manufacturing plastic components. This is why this is used in the aerospace and the high-end automotive industry. We have invested quite uh, a lot of money in understanding the wind load effect, uh, doing testing in wind in wind tunnels, and we have even done more challenging tests like this uh, type of real life testing where we have installed our technology in a massive tank and we are replicating high waves and high frequency waves. So here you can see you have big waves and the waves are coming very short one after the other. And this creates a very good simulation of the fatigue effect. And you can see how the structure is surfing the wave. The wave is not crashing into the structure. It's flexible enough to accommodate those variations 
in water. And it's the same principle that is used to absorb the fatigue. Floating solar plants will be on top of water and the water will be moving. Maybe in some cases will be big waves like the one that we just saw, but in most of the times will be a small movement of the water, small waves, 10, 15, 20 centimeters waves. And the constant movement of the water will create fatigue in the connectors, in the corners of the floats, and you need to have a system that is flexible enough to accommodate that fatigue. For example, in our system, we use for the connectors of the floats, we use uh, fiberglass and nylon to connect the floats together. We don't connect them directly. So what are some of the potential opportunities that exist for the use of floating solar technology? I'm not going to go into all the detail, but here you can see several industries that could benefit from our knowledge and understanding from floating solar projects. Uh, maybe install them in hydroelectric facilities to hybridize the systems or in the mining industry in tailing dams, uh, in the agriculture industry, in the irrigation reservoir that are used to accumulate water and uh, similar to fish farming or wineries, even water management companies that have uh, potable water for human consumption, you can also install uh, floating solar. And finally, to give you a few examples of where our technology has been used, uh, this is first an uh, installation in an irrigation reservoir where the client has uh, gradually installed our system in different stages. Now this system is operational uh, with around 2.5 mega projects. Here we have another project in an uh, active quarry lake in Germany where there is sand construction. This project is for the largest cement company in Germany, and the system uh, produces energy to, uh, that is used for the production in the factory that you can see here on, on top. And the last example that I wanted to show today, it's one of our latest projects in the largest dam in Western Europe, and this is a hybridization uh, together with the hydroelectric facility. The facility is owned by EDP, the uh, Portuguese utility, and it's a very challenging environment. It's a five mega project in a reservoir that has a maximum depth of 70 meters, more than 20 meters of water level variation, and the waves that can hit the structure can be larger than one meter waves. So in synthesis, Floating solar is a great opportunity. Uh, we believe it's a, a great opportunity for India, given the large amount of reservoir that you have. And if you pay attention to the key challenges of floating solar projects, the projects can be successful and you can help in the transition of the energy for, to floating solar in India. Thank you very much for your attention. Here you have our contact details. Let us know if we can help you support any comments or doubts that you might have in the future. Have a good day. Thank you very much.